Bob is to connect my Raspberry Pi 3 with 7-inch touchscreen to the sound system in my workshop. The receiver, amp is an older Onkyo and doesn't have HDMI in but does have s slash and coax digital in. After connecting the USB to the Pi I was able to select the output type, connect to the receiver slash amp via optical and play music immediately. Sound quality is outstanding when processing MP3, FLAC or even SACT. Only one con. I left it running all night because I hadn't set up the remote app for the Pi. When I powered up the amp the next day there was a slight hissing, buzzing in the sound output. I thought maybe it was a grounding issue so I connected the hi fi USB to the amp with a small wire. No help. I disconnected the USB, waited 10 seconds and reconnected. Hissing was gone. If it happens again I will connect the Pi, hi fi USB and receiver grounds to see if that helps. Otherwise very happy with this product. I have been using a Peachtree Audio DCIT for several years now, not the new model, Dasix. I become very accustomed to its sound, and have really grown to love it. When I bought it, my entire family was in awe of how much of a difference a DAC made in my music system. I've wanted to update people's music systems for Christmas gifts over the years, they are cost prohibitive, a peach tree DAC runs right around $300, so for many, not exactly a purchase you can just do on a whim. I did purchase my sister and add electronics DAC1 wireless USB digital to analog converter for $150 here on Amazon. Horrible purchase. The DAC didn't sound nearly as good as my DAC, and it wrecked her Wi-Fi. She could only either use her internet, or her DAC. Not both. No streaming music. Wow, what a letdown. So, that was the end of me considering buying Dax's gifts. Till now. I was about to buy a benchmark DAC 2, $2000 ish DAC, and give my mother my old peach tree, but then I stumbled upon a review by Peak Gamer website, of his new acquisition, benchmark DAC 2. He compared it to a $20 DAC, a $50 DAC, and a $200, I think, DAC. He came to the conclusion that it is beyond diminishing returns. The only thing you are paying for with more expensive DAX, is the extra features. So, I decided to buy this DAC as a Christmas present this year. When it arrived, I immediately opened it up to compare it to my DAC. I was very surprised. They sound identical as far as I can tell. The system I used to test it, Mac Mini using iTunes slash Fidelia, for FLAC, Onkyo TX and R809 receiver Movia XPR 5 Amp Energy Veritas 6. Two rear speakers Sirwin Vega XLS 215 fronts. I just ordered some tech and double impact speakers to replace the Sirwin Vegas. If that makes a difference in how I hear the sound between the two DACs, I will update. Also, I am writing this review the same day I receive the product. I have no idea as far as longevity. Having purchased several of these impressive little DAX from various sources over the past couple years, we felt it was time to chime in with a real review. Spoiler alert, while our initial impressions concur with the vast majority of other positive reviews posted here. Well mentioned there is far more performance to be had from this device with some minor modifications. If this is potentially of interest to you, feel free to read on, otherwise rest assured even in the original configuration the bang for the buck here is exceptional. Considering the modest cost, we feel it's unlikely to disappoint. Note that this identical DAC can be found elsewhere online with other brand names on the casing. The original design was apparently by Muse Audio and has been widely copied by numerous overseas manufacturers and sold through many channels. In our experience the internal component quality does vary somewhat, 
Although the general circuit design has been consistent in the T slash for around 2704, while an older DA chipset, is certainly of high quality. With an electronics background and an innate compulsion to tinker, we decided to see just how much performance can be squeezed out of this little beast. Part of the allure here is the small overall size, and for convenience, the lack of an outboard power source. Essentially any device with a typical 5V slash 1A USB port should adequately power this DAC. The build quality of the aluminum case is of surprisingly high quality at this price point. After removing the four screws retaining the end plate, the entire board can be carefully slid out. Delving a bit deeper into the circuits themselves, decoding the resistor banding, they appear to be fairly tight tolerance. Subsequent testing with a multimeter confirm. Those we choose to leave alone. Having personally recapped many older components over the years, amps, receivers, crossovers, etc. We're well aware of the sometimes dramatic difference in perceived sound quality of few well-chosen capacitors, particularly those in critical locations, signal path especially, can make. This is one area that every one of these fax web purchases differ, the brand of capacitors. While outwardly identical, internally even the color of the PCBs has varied. One was blue, another white, and yet another black. Not much consistency there. Likely a matter of which parts vendor was slightly cheaper on a bulk order at the time of manufacture. We know you're thinking, cut to the chase here man. No problem. Ultimately we opted to upgrade all of the caps on the board. Factory component values were retained. After many hours of total listening to various configurations, the final mods, see photos, including a mix of our personal favorite, Silky Smooth El Nisomat Ooze, Nishikon Fine Gold, and Nishikon BPs, 1 Oof, 50 volts. As you can see in the photos the Elnas in particular are absolutely massive size-wise compared to the decidedly inferior originals that were removed. After some careful measurements it was determined they would just clear the case, and indeed they do. Nowadays, due to strict Rose standards virtually everything electronic is now manufactured with lead-free solder that can be much more difficult to work with. Click link in description for more reviews.